welcome to another episode of The Big Opportunity. This is a video conversation series hosted by Church of St. John the Divine here in Houston, Texas, uh, where we have a pretty simple and narrow focus. We are engaging with church leaders around the world, asking the question, what is the big opportunity in light of all the challenges that churches, Christians face uh, in this day? My name is Lee Spruill, your host. I'm delighted that we have as our guest today, Bishop Jenny Anderson. Bishop Jenny is the new rector at St. Paul's Bloor Street in Toronto, Canada. You should know that St. Paul's Bloor Street is the largest Anglican congregation in the country of Canada. You've heard me already address her as Bishop. That's because <laughs> she is one in the <laughs> Anglican Church of Canada, having been consecrated in 2016 and served as an area bishop uh, for the metropolitan area of Toronto until her new ministry. She's married and they have three daughters living in Toronto. Uh, bishop Jenny, you're great to be my guest today. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much, Lee. It's uh, wonderful to have the invitation. And I just love the fact that the Holy Spirit and the wonders of technology allow us to talk like this. So great to be with you. And uh, hello to your congregation. And to yours. Thank you so much. And speaking of our respective congregations, uh, in light of your call to this new ministry in just this calendar year, St. Paul's Bloor Street, I have a strong sense that you must have discerned uh, some big opportunity there in that ministry. And I wondered if you might just share with our viewers uh, where you do believe the big opportunity lies for local congregations in this day and time. No, thank you. It's a, it's a great question. And I'm just delighted you're having these conversations. It's exciting. I mean, I think one of the huge opportunities that COVID has given us, the, the virus, is this chance to reclaim the home as a place for worship and faith formation. And I think, you know, the virus has forced us into our homes to worship. And, you know, online worship is an amazing opportunity. Uh, I've been stunned to see across our diocese and at St. Paul's this resurgence of the daily office of people doing morning prayer, evening prayer, Compline, that if we online on Zoom, that if we had hosted it at the church building, we would have had like two people. Um, whereas people are doing it at home and are eager and hungry to learn how to pray at home. And so I think there's huge opportunity there to um, form those ancient spiritual habits that have sustained Christians for centuries that by and large we've lost in the mainline church and we haven't been forming people in them with significant intentionality. And I think COVID has given us the opportunity to say, wait a second, <laughs> we used to teach people how to pray. We used to teach people how to read the scriptures at home. And uh, so I think we got a huge opportunity to do that uh, for people to worship devotionally themselves day in, day out at home. So I think that's a, a huge opportunity. And I can certainly see that at St. Paul's is that how do we, um, you know, rebuild the daily office and things like that uh, for people. Obviously, online worship is a huge opportunity. You know, many churches in our diocese and certainly at St. Paul's, more people are engaging online than used to come in the doors. And that tells us something, I think, about the spiritual hunger that is, of course, still out there. It, sh it shouldn't surprise us. We know that people were created to worship God. Um, and so the fact that there's so many people engaging online who are not willing to walk through the doors of our buildings, as beautiful as they may be, and St. Paul's is spectacularly beautiful, it tells us something about the spiritual hunger and the way that is still out there and the ways that we need to engage going forward. So I think that's a really significant opportunity is the online worship, you know, St. Paul's, I think similar St. John's has, you know, a YouTube uh, channel, YouTube services now, which we never used to have before. And I think the other, uh, you know, big opportunity is, is to equip parents and grandparents to uh, catechize their children. Uh, you know, just speaking with the Canadian context, we have not been intentional, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but we haven't been intentional in equipping parents for probably two or three generations to actually form faith at home. It, you know, you took your kids to Sunday school on Sunday and, you know, you did that as often as you could. And that was seen as enough. Well, it doesn't form disciples, or it rarely forms disciples. And I think the wreckage of that is now all around us, at least in the Canadian Anglican church. So those are some of my initial thoughts about what I can see unfolding for us at St. Paul's and across Canada. 
Well, they're great thoughts. Uh, I love your three-part answer to that question. And uh, I think as an immediate follow-up, I want to uh, focus on uh, what you said about sort of being church in the homes when we can't come to the church campus or the church proper. And by the way, to anybody who is in Toronto, you have to go to St. Paul's Bloor Street. It is a spectacular uh, church building. It's beautiful. Uh, we too are, are trying to reemphasize here in our local congregation the importance of um, faith formation and worship in homes. Um, and as you say, there's a lot of work to be done there. I wonder if you could offer any practical advice about uh, what you all are doing or what you all are learning at St. Paul's uh, in encouraging people um, to take those steps in returning to sort of what you were calling ancient practices, again, of worship and faith formation with families in our homes. Yeah, so we're, we're just at the early stages of that, Lee. I've, you know, I've only been in the parish for a few months. Um, but I think, you know, one step we did is we, we, one of the first things I did in my first month actually was to do a program, six weeks on ancient spiritual practices for the congregation. And we had a really good uptake on that. And, you know, Anglicans, we've been doing this, right? You know, at least in the Canadian prayer book, it's on page 660. It's the Anglican rule of life, which of course just comes from, I think, Augustine, who just took it from Acts. You know, it's not, it's nothing original. So I think there is, um, what I would like to see us do at St. Paul's is rebuild an overt, I would probably call it a rhythm of life, not a rule of life, but a rhythm of life that we invite members of the congregation to commit to. Um, and what does that look like in their daily lives? So I think, you know, we've started um, talking about that for the congregation. I think that's a, a relatively new concept for a lot of them. And then um, we've, we've been looking at a course called Families Following Jesus that we're going to design, which would be part of our baptism preparation so that after a family has had their child baptized, they would then be invited voluntold into the families following Jesus program that would be uh, equipping parents to read the scriptures at home with their kids, um, teaching parents how to pray. They're incredibly hungry to learn how, but, but they're al almost afraid to ask. They don't want to admit that they don't know how. So I think we need to kind of break down those barriers of embarrassment for parents that they don't know how to do this. Um, and to say, it's okay, right? We're here to help. That's our job is to help you and equip you. And people want to do it with other people. <laughs> they don't want to be the only one doing it. So if you say, this is the rhythm of family life for this congregation, are you in and we'll support you? Um, I think that's appealing. And, you know, my experience is high commitment churches grow and, you know, people, they, <laughs> they want to be challenged and uh, I think as long as you're there to support and encourage them and go, yes, this is hard, but let me tell you, the payoff of giving your children the gift of faith in Jesus Christ is absolutely worth it, um, then I think there's something appealing and compelling there. So I think we're at the early stages, Lee, but we're, we're raising the spiritual temperature of talking about ancient spiritual practices as a way to flourish in difficult times. And then I think there's programmatic ways that you can come alongside families to equip them about what those practices look like. Of course, I, I love your comment that high commitment churches are the ones that tend to grow. And you also said something there that um, I know that a, a lot of us who may be watching uh, face, certainly here in the United States, if not there in Toronto, and that is kind of a culture of uh, perfection or success, wherein uh, we may not feel adequately prepared or trained to actually live out our faith and share it with our kids even. So we want to tend to farm it out to religious professionals and, yeah. and giving people permission to, to learn as they go. And the, the payoff is enormous. So um, I thank you for those comments. And so I think I may have just one more question for you, Bishop Jenny. I, uh, at the risk of some presumptuousness, I, I believe that St. Paul's Bloor Street has a kind of a, a important and a historical evangelical ethos. And I am wondering, uh, as we wind up this conversation, if you might share with us where you see opportunities uh, for churches such as yours, a large, diverse, urban uh, parish, to, co to connect with um, the unchurched or people who uh, may have questions, the non-believer in our times. 
St. Paul's historically, as you say, it has that evangelical ethos. So I think, you know, it's got a, you know, historic pulpit in the city. So I think that there is that opportunity now for proclaiming the gospel online, as I've alluded to before. Um, however, you need to be aware if you're preaching now online, especially in Toronto, that, you know, the percentage of the, of the people listening to you who are not Christians is probably significantly increased. So, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, so how does that impact our preaching, right? Like, um, and um, we're, we're looking at having a, in the future, in the next few months, having a live stream service of our current, one of our, one of our services that will just be like, this is what we are. This is Anglican. This is kind of in crowd and having a different kind of service called the bridge remix, which will be intended um, for people who are spiritually searching. Um, so I think there's an opportunity there, thanks to our resources, but to, be actually teaching the faith uh, and preaching the gospel um, in some in some intentional ways to reach people who are not uh, followers of Jesus yet, but who are spiritually curious. Because I think there's a ton of those people, <laughs> um, and online is great. So I think that that fits with the DNA of St. Paul's as a preaching church focused on the ministry of the word. And then I think the other way is to, is to is through outreach and servant ministries. Uh, you know, we, uh, you know, there's a lot of poverty in downtown Toronto. There's a lot of brokenness in our relationships with our Indigenous brothers and sisters. And St. Paul's has a book, big footprint in the heart of the city. So, you know, for example, we've started a, a basically an Uber Eats kitchen called the Reb's Kitchen. It started before I became the rector. So I think they need to call it the Bishop's Kitchen now. <laughs> and uh, this, um, this is where people can come and we have a, a commercial kitchen. People can order food for lunch and dinner and it's top quality and all the proceeds go to fund shelter meals uh, for those on the streets in the heart of the city. And so um, there's things like that. And we're looking at how can we do ministries to reconcile with our indigenous brothers and sisters. Um, so I think that those servant ministries, serving the poor, working towards racial justice in our city, um, is a wonderful way to, well, to follow the commands of Jesus as primarily, but to also partner with other organizations in the city, uh, people who are secular and who are like, why are these Christians doing this? <laughs> and then you get to have a conversation. So I think there's that ministry of the word. And then I think there's the servant ministries of serving the poor, uh, seeking for racial, re racial reconciliation as well in our city that are, are some of the ways that I think God is opening up and challenging a historic church like St. Paul's to, to take a position of leadership. Excellent. And thank you so much, Bishop and uh, Jenny. Uh, great response there. And uh, I know that that is something that we would like to embody in our own congregational life here. And I imagine other church leaders uh, watching this are inspired by what you just shared also. I'd love to continue the conversation. In fact, we try to keep these conversations rather short and punchy, but uh, this has been an absolute delight, Bishop Jenny. Thank you so much. I'll look forward to keeping up with your ministry and hopefully crossing paths with you in the near future. Thank you. And I hope the Lord lets our paths cross in person one of these days again. Thanks Thank so you. much. Bye-bye. God Thank bless. You. And thanks to all of you for uh, tuning in to this episode of The Big Opportunity. Uh, please feel free to subscribe as you look at this on YouTube. You can hit the button down there below the video, and we'll look forward to further conversations in the coming weeks.